Well, she isn't the only one that's uh, done it. And, and uh, you know, when somebody that was on this network and still is on this network uh, many times, uh, Rick Becker decided John Hoven needed to be run against, that he was someone that uh, really wasn't doing what he said he was going to do. Well, on the Dem NPL side, Katrina Christensen is uh, making that same argument, maybe for different reasons, but the truth of the matter is she is running against John Hoven. Let's bring her in. Katrina, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks, Joel. I appreciate you letting me be here. So, so I completely agree. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, let's let's talk a little bit, if we can, about the decision on Friday by the United States Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. Did those same justices that swung everything to be the majority? Did they lie to us? Yes, they they lied to the uh, Senate during the confirmation hearings and the American public when they said that they would uh, allow Roe and Casey's precedent to remain in place. So, so that being said, um, you know, <laughs> there's been votes made uh, for these individuals. And I guess some of those votes, or at least uh, the, the votes on the final three that made that difference were made by John Hovind. Uh, do you think he was informed? Uh, do you think that this is something that disappoints John Hovind? Or do you think behind the scenes they always knew it was going to happen? I don't know that they they thought it was always going to happen. I think that they're probably just as shocked, but are celebrating in in, in that right now. Um, mostly, I think they're the car that finally got the or the dog that finally got the car. Right? They they've caught it, and now they don't know what's going to happen because you see even in states right now like Texas, where miscarriage has been potentially criminalized. There was a story just last week about a woman who had to wait eight hours to receive life-saving care um, while the doctor was on the phone with a lawyer making sure it was okay to, to go ahead with um, you know, life-saving care because she was bleeding out. Um, I think that there's a, a group of women who are very concerned about what this means for their fertility treatments. So if they're pursuing IVF, how does this impact their medical care going forward? How does this impact their ability to have families? And they're very concerned. And I think that um, because of the way that uh, Republican legislatures um, acted for the last 20 years, passing um, stricter and stricter abortion bans, they really started to encroach on medical care and without, without concern that it might actually become law and affect women's lives. So, you know, when you talk about that, and, and North Dakota, the North Dakota legislature made up of men. I mean, it, it is men. There aren't many women that are in the North Dakota legislature. And, and, and so you look at the North Dakota legislature and how conservative it is. And, you know, is it hard to imagine a scenario where they take it even a step farther than what they already have? Whereas instead of having these exceptions for life of mother, for example, they point out, just like Mississippi, uh, that you will bring that baby to term no matter what the circumstances are. That fetus will be taken to term. Um, I think that because you already have, I think it's a 13 other states that have very strict abortion bans. And there are three states that even don't have um, language, South Dakota being one of them that protects the health of the mother. So I certainly think that's a, a potential. I also think that, you know, to your point about it being dominated by men, they really might not understand some of the medical conditions that a pregnant woman can encounter and therefore don't understand the medical treatment. So if you have, um, you know, a, a miscarriage and you need to remove the, the fetus from your um, body and you can't do that, then you can, you know, have sepsis and, and die from that. Or, you know, if you have an ectopic pregnancy, the treatment for that is, is an abortion. And if you don't treat that, you'll die. You and you and the fetus will die. So there is definitely a concern on my part because there are many um, ill-informed, you know, legislatures and legislators in the state that could, without concern for really serious medical conditions, you know, ban treatment. 
for that. And, you know, you could say, oh, well, you can go to another state to get that. But in the case of like an erupted placenta, you know, you need to have that care immediately. You risk um, very serious complications or death trying to fly somewhere to seek that care. And so as, as the GOP has moved in this extreme direction of restricting women's right to medical care, um, they, they've done so without really considering the, the implications of it. And now they're here, they are here. What, what do you say to those individuals, Katrina, who say, hey, there's an answer to this, don't have sex? Well, I, I think that that is um, really a uh, flippant answer um, because I think that a lot of, uh, you know, adult relationships are, are complicated and, and sex is had. And there are situations where um, people don't choose to engage in sex and they end up pregnant. And, um, you know, there are situations where the relationship is volatile. I mean, there are all sorts of situations in which pregnancies happen. And it's not as simple as saying, you know, abstain. Um, I think that there is, uh, I forget the exact statistic, but um, states that only teach abstinence have higher rates of teen pregnancy than those that don't. And so if we're going to say that, then we need to use evidence-based um, evidence to, to, to reduce the number of abortions, if, if that's really what you're going for. But we know that abortion bans don't reduce the number of abortions. They just reduce the safe abortions. What, what do you say to those individuals who say, look, uh, carry the baby to term and give that baby up to adoption? So th their NPR had a, a really fascinating article or, you know, a story about that. There are about 900 to 800,000 abortions a year for a variety of reasons. Um, and there are only about 18 to 20,000 adoptions a year. And so what that tells us is that most women that do not elect to have an abortion keep their child, right? And so, um, you know, what, what the results of that are, having kept the child may be, you know, not getting more education, may mean, you know, lower income, may mean a whole host of, you know, economic outcomes as well as health outcomes. Because if you have low economic opportunity, you also have a low health outcome associated with that. So I think that for those people, um, they're, 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 they've been taught to be very focused on a very narrow, um, you know, snippet of late term pregnancy where, you know, um, there's a, there's a, a baby um, really earlier, much, most of the abortions happen before 12 weeks. So, so, you know, last question, I promise, you know, in terms of being a United States Senator, uh, which is the job you're running for, do you ever ask yourself whether or not the, all these men, all these white men in the United States Senate actually are out there uh, pushing for the fact that there will be an abortion ban? That's been their goal. Uh, Mitch McConnell didn't hide that goal, uh, you know, that that because of that, this happened. Do you believe they're hypocrites uh, in the sense that much of what they vote for doesn't support that child after it's born? Oh, absolutely. No, they they really have no understanding about what it's like to be a regular person raising uh, a family and, and what it takes to uh, pay for childcare, to you know, take kids to appointments, to be homesick with them, right? There are a whole host of things that we could be doing just to support families and, and, and women with children, right? We, we don't do that in North Dakota. We do not have paid family medical leave. After I had my first child, I went back to work two weeks after I had him. There, the, the idea of that now to me as, you know, a 40-year-old woman and having to go back two weeks after is, is really hard. But lots of women have to do that because they yeah. do not have access to the things that they need to be successful at parenting and things like that. And so they choose abortion. Katrina, and they, they choose abortion for a whole host of reasons, none of which we should judge. Yeah. Uh, Kat Katrina, where do people go to find out more about your campaign? Um, 
you can go to Katrina for US Senate.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Katrina Thank for you. US Senate. Thank you so much Thank for you sharing so. your time with us.